is if you're considering hiring a bookkeeper to join you and join your team, make sure that you thoroughly understand accounting before you hire this person. Welcome to Gentle Frog's Bookkeeping Lilypad, your cozy corner of the podcasting world, where numbers tell a story and bookkeeping blossoms into an adventure. My name is Rachel Barnett, and I'm glad you're here. This podcast is for bookkeepers who enjoy authentic, unfiltered, and always encouraging friend to chalk shop with. We will be discussing what it's like to own and operate a small bookkeeping business. Recently, I've spent a lot of time talking to new bookkeepers and just having coaching, consulting, how do I run my business? What are some best practices kind of conversations? There was a conversation that I had that I really liked, and I thought I would just kind of rework it into a podcast episode. The bookkeeper is new and is just starting her business. But she asked, when I get more business and I get more traction and I get more revenue, what's the best place that I can spend my money? Well, the answer is I have no idea. I just met you. We kind of talked a little bit further and she decided that what she felt like she needed wasn't going to be software or education, but instead more help. She knew she didn't want to be solo. And she's like, I guess that I should probably hire a bookkeeper. And I'm like, well, that's definitely a possibility. If you're in a similar boat where you're looking at your business and you're saying, I like how it is now, but six months or a year from now, it's going to be different. I would ask you to think about what's going to be different. Is there something different that you're going to be offering? And if so, do you know how to do the thing to offer the thing that's different? Or instead, do you just want to have a business that's bigger? Do you want to be able to take on more clients and have more capacity? If you're in a situation where you want to be bigger and you want to take on more clients and you want to have capacity, you might be thinking to yourself, I need to hire staff. I need to hire a team. I need to hire at least one bookkeeper, maybe more. There are pros and cons to hiring a bookkeeper to help you with your stuff. You've got to make a decision to start with. Are you going to hire somebody who is experienced? Experience translates to somebody who is definitely more expensive than what you might be initially thinking. But it also provides you flexibility that you've got somebody who knows how to do the things that isn't going to need you to hold their hand and describe every small thing to them. Or would you prefer to hire a newbie? Everybody needs to start somewhere. Everybody would love to be given that chance. The advantage of hiring a newbie is you're going to hire somebody who's going to be more affordable. The disadvantage is it's going to be a person who is going to need you to teach them the ropes. In both cases, you have to talk to this person about what are your office policies, what are your expectations, the nuances of your clients. The differences will be when there are questions that come up, an experienced person will have fewer or different questions than a newbie. If you're considering hiring a bookkeeper, you want to think about how long do you need this person to be with you? Are you hiring someone that's just looking for temporary work until they can get their own business going and then they're going to leave? I think there are positives in all of these versions of hiring a person. In the past, I've hired experienced people when I've needed someone who knows how to do this stuff that can just step in and be helpful immediately. I've also hired newbies when I've met people because I do a lot of training. I meet a lot of people. When I meet people that are really awesome and they don't have enough business yet to be sustainable, I'll hire a newbie for sure. The advantage to me of hiring a newbie is that I get to know someone better than I did. I'm giving somebody a few dollars that they didn't have otherwise. I'm giving them experience and exposure to something they may not have seen. I'm also getting help with something that I'm working on. Oftentimes when I hire a newbie, I'm not hiring them with the intention that they're going to be a long-term member of the team, although I'm always thankful if they become a friend. I'm hiring people that can help me with short-term projects. Sometimes it's creating the behind the scenes content or doing easy stuff for my courses. Oftentimes when I make a course to explain how QuickBooks works, I'll make the supporting documents to go with it. So some make-believe invoices or bills and some statements. That's the sort of thing I can ask a newbie to help with. This is all to say when I hire a newbie, sometimes they're going to learn something new and sometimes they're just going to get cash. My recommendation that I'll mention today is if you're considering hiring a bookkeeper to join you and join your team, make sure that you thoroughly understand accounting before you hire this person. I cannot tell you the number of times that I've worked with a new bookkeeper who has hired other bookkeepers and none of them know what they're doing. The problem isn't that they don't know what they're doing. The problem is that there's no plan for quality control. I had worked with and had a phone call with a newbie bookkeeper business owner. They had hired a different newbie to do the bookkeeping for a client. The bookkeeper, the main bookkeeper business owner, hopped on a call with me and said, hey, I just wonder if you can review the books with me and make sure everything looks good. I feel like it's probably good, but maybe a second set of eyes would be great. 
So they screen share and we look at the books and they're disaster, like a huge, huge disaster. The bank account has negative numbers. There's stuff in uncategorized asset. It's way more than I need a second set of eyes. It's more like neither person understood the fundamentals and there was no plan in place to learn it, to do better, to learn more. The bookkeeper and I had that one 30 minute phone call and I never heard from them again. I'm really hoping they worked out a plan to get themselves some foundational knowledge so they can just double check the bookkeeper's work and also worked out a plan to help the bookkeeper learn and fill in their own knowledge gaps. There are definitely times that I hire people who are more experienced, more educated, and just more familiar with things in bookkeeping land than I am. I'm okay with this. I've got no judgment. What I do know is how to look at a balance sheet and say, yeah, this seems about right, or no, that seems super goofy. So when I talk about how I think you should have some basis of knowledge before hiring another bookkeeper, it's because I want you to have this. I want you to be able to look at a set of books and say, yep, That seems reasonable. This is fantastic. I'm doing a great job for my client and I totally won because I hired someone amazing and this person could maybe show me some things or at the very least just expand our offerings because they know things that I don't know. Gentle Frog is my second business. My first business was a business called Primarily Bookkeeping. DBA, your bookkeeping fairy godmother. I love the name. I love the branding. I didn't love the business. The business grew to the point that it wasn't fun for me anymore. This is why I intentionally stay small. When I started Gentle Frog and I had enough money to spend on something, the first thing I did was hire an admin. Having an admin at the old firm and frankly having an admin now is one of the best things that I could do for myself for my business. This ranks well above having an office and in my case it ranks above hiring a bookkeeper. Now I have both. At this point, I have an admin and I have a bookkeeper and they're both amazing and I couldn't imagine doing this without them. But when I first started my business and I had very little money coming in and I had to be really careful and decide what was I going to purchase or buy or invest in, the answer for me was an admin. I'll talk briefly about what my admin did and why I needed this person. I had an admin named Nina. She was the admin that was with me at the former firm. She didn't know and probably still doesn't know much, if anything, about QuickBooks. She was a person who kept track of my CRM. At the time, I was using Zoho CRM. What she would do within that was keep track of where my leads came from. Now, certainly I was asking people, how did you hear of me? but she's the one who put it into a database making it actually useful information. She kept track of when I should follow up with people. I think it's a bit of magic because there definitely wasn't a formula. She would be CC'd on the outgoing emails and we would chat privately in Slack. I would explain the gist of a conversation and what a client needed. And then she would ask her gut when I should follow up on things. This would go into the CRM, which I would promptly ignore. That would be followed by Slack messages from Nina saying, hey, I noticed that you're ignoring your CRM to-do list. You really need to follow up on these things. If I felt like I couldn't follow up, she would draft a message in broken English describing what I should say, forcing me, of course, to rewrite the message so she didn't send it on my behalf. When we started working together almost 10 years ago, her English wasn't as good as it is now. She was born in Serbia and lives in Montenegro. She was able to pay for herself by encouraging and helping me follow up on things. Because she had such a good sense of me and my personality, as well as what was happening within the business, and just a little side of her being a very direct European, she was able to give me feedback and unsolicited thoughts and ideas. This is way better than talking to your friends. This is a person who is going to go out of your way and tell you what she thinks you're doing right and wrong and could improve on. It worked out nicely that this was her personality and that it's a personality type I enjoy. It worked out nicely that she didn't care if I said, no, that's not what I'm going to do, but thanks for your input. I no longer work with Nina only because I've given up on having a CRM and I have a better system for follow-ups. I did find value in knowing where my leads came from and knowing how much revenue I could link to each lead source. The other things that she did for me, they were really helpful in the old firm. She helped me make sure things were running smoothly with my team, that clients were getting responses to emails on a consistent basis, that the team was checking off their tasks in the to-do list or in the task manager. These are things that I didn't need with my current firm. Having her there with me when I got started was amazing and instrumental. I know that I can look at my QuickBooks file and just see how are things going. My QuickBooks file, however, is just going to tell me about the facts. Here's the money I've collected and here's the money I've spent. 
When I started Gentle Frog, I started with no revenue and basically no clients because I had sold the old business and I couldn't solicit the old clients. So all I had was my reputation, crossing my fingers and a lot of caffeine. Having had worked with Nina, I knew she was going to track everything, including the leads. Whenever I felt lower down, I could count on Nina to tell me, here's your average number of leads. Here's where the leads are coming from. Here's about how long it takes you to close a lead. So somebody contacts you, you have a conversation. The time between conversation and them signing up for a service, it's usually X number of days or weeks or whatever the case is. This information was helpful because you don't always see that stuff. You're in the middle of it and you don't see what's happening. You see a pipeline and a list of potentials, but you don't know what that means. All of the potentials seem good. You had great conversations. You think to yourself, oh yeah, this person's definitely going to hire me. But you know, that's not true. Tracking this stuff is stuff that I definitely could have done on my own. I preferred to have Nina there to track it because she was so good at it. Because she knew the things she wanted to track because we'd fine-tuned it before. Her background is in CRM in managing databases. Her background isn't in bookkeeping. I didn't need to tell her what I wanted to track. She came in and told me, here are some things I think you should track. She started out as a person who I hired to teach me to use Zoho. She took the initiative and said, I can see your business. I have experience with other businesses. Here are some things I recommend and you're welcome to hire me to help you with these things. My ideal admin is going to be somebody who knows what they're good at, who can see what's going on with your business, can identify gaps and can offer to help you with those things. So I'm going to bring this back to the beginning. When you think about your business and you think, I'm getting a little bit more money in the door. I'm able to reinvest in my business. I want to reinvest into a human, not a software. Ask yourself, what is your goal? What do you need to hire for? What's the thing that's going to be most beneficial for you? That thing could be something like an admin, in which case you have to figure out what does the admin do, or it could be a bookkeeper. If it's going to be a bookkeeper, you have to think about, do I want an experienced bookkeeper or do I want a newbie? Do I want someone who might stay with me long term? Or somebody who is definitely looking to fill in the gaps until their business takes off. I'll make a different episode where I kind of walk through the different things about what an admin can do, how you can support your person, whether it's an admin or a bookkeeper, and other random ideas that I've written out on my notepad. For this episode, I'll just end with asking you, when you finally got to the point that your business grew enough, you could hire help. What help did you hire first? Are you glad you hired that help? What advice would you give somebody that says, I've got extra money. I'm not looking to build some sort of multi-million dollar enterprise. I'm just trying to not be the only person carrying all the burdens on my shoulder. I need some help, but I don't know what I need. Or I need some help, but I don't know what I should spend money on first. All I've done here is just describe my experience and why I've hired the person I hired. I'd love to hear from you. What role did you hire for first? We can certainly have a conversation about the rest of your team. And goodness knows throughout these podcast episodes, you're going to hear about my whole team. I really want to focus in on the fact that my goal for this podcast is to provide support, encouragement, silly ideas, good ideas, bad ideas, and just things to think about, but geared to the very new, very small, and very uncertain bookkeeper. 